Hi, uh, I'm Deirdre Sullivan. I'm a writer of young adult fiction. One of the things I like to do in my work is to retell stories. I find it can be a great way to play with structure, with character, with imagery, with setting and with world building while having an established framework or map to use to guide you. I'm going to talk a little bit today about the nuts and bolts of how I approach retelling and for every nut and every bolt I'm going to give you a little bit of work to do yourselves so that by the end of this workshop hopefully you have a, um, a beginning, a start, something you can get excited about. Okay, here we go. The first thing that I want you to do for this is to choose the story that you want to retell. A story that you are drawn to, a story that you can find inspiring. Um, inspiring isn't necessarily the same thing as inspirational. Though if there's a story that you find really inspirational and it makes you really happy, obviously um, if you have a very good idea for retelling it, that's fine. But personally, I'm drawn to the stories that annoy me a little bit. The stories that I almost love, but then don't sit right because something unfair or something hard happens. And I want to look at that and examine it and explore it. And I find that really satisfying as a writer. So, um, yes, I want you to pause me in a second and choose a story that you have feelings about, that you have an emotional connection to. Now, it doesn't have to be a fairy tale, though for the purposes of this workshop, I will be using fairy tale references as that's what I retell the most. But I just want to reiterate, it could be Paw Patrol. It could be Robocop. It could be Back to the Future. Um, it can be anything. As long as you find the right hook, you can probably make it good. Um, so I'm going to ask you to pause and to rack your brains and think of a story that you have a strong emotional connection to and just write down the title. Okay, I'll see you in a sec. Hi, welcome back. So now you have a story that you want to retell or a story that you're thinking about that makes you curious. So now we're going to follow that curiosity for a little bit. A lot of writing is thinking, and it's important to respect the thinking part, the part that takes time. But there is also another part, the part where you force yourself to sit down and make a start and make a plan. It won't be perfect, first drafts never are, but it can be something you can work with, and that's what we want now. So we're gonna try and build a map or build bones of the story. I want you to take a timer on your phone and set it for three minutes. And I want you to take that time to write what you remember happening in that story, how you recall the story, as much of it as you can remember, okay? Just for the three minutes and when it beeps, come back to me and I'll be very, very proud of you. Welcome back, I'm so proud of you. Um, so you've chosen the story you wanna tell. And now we're going to look at the imagery that draws you in. And it might give you hints of the themes you want to explore, the main character. But um, we're going to look at images. Scroll through what you've written in the three minutes. And I want you to circle or to underline the words and images that jump out to you. The ones that you can picture the strongest in your head. And these are going to form the bones of the imagery you're going to weave through the story. Okay, I'm going to give you some time to do that now. So you have your story, you have your roadmap, you have your imagery. Now we're going to think about the form you're going to weave those things through. Writing can take many forms, as well you know. So I want you to think about what you like to write, what your strengths are as a writer, and also what might suit the story that you want to tell. If you want to explore a scene, an emotion, a powerful moment, perhaps a poem or a piece of flash fiction might be the way to go. If you want to explore a side character's journey within the story or to retell it in a compact manner, um, short fiction might be the way to do that. Um, if you want to add to it, to put layers and layers onto the world and maybe kind of do some world building, um, like Cinderella with vampires or Little Red Riding Hood, only everyone has dragons. Like that sounds like a novel to me. If you want to, um, if you want to tell a visual story, maybe you want to storyboard a film or write a script um, or a play or um, a graphic novel um, or a comic strip, like go nuts. Just choose something that you really like and think about the story that you want to tell and how they will mesh together and find find the right form that you're going to work on. Okay, welcome back. You've decided how you're going to tell the story, what the story is going to be, and the imagery you're going to use. Well done. Now we're going to look at main character, because even if you're writing a poem, like, I mean, there's a voice, there's a perspective. Um, so I want you to think about 
who your main character is. What are they like? What do they want? Um, and will the story give it to them or prevent them from getting it? With fairy tales, because they tend to be quite short, um, the characters might not be drawn with the level of complexity that you would like for them. But that's a blessing because you get to colour them in and decide who they are. And that's really powerful as a writer. Um, so I want you to think about a character within your story that you are going to write. And I want you to flesh them out a little bit. Just take two minutes to write down six things about them, what they want, what they fear, who or what they love, what motivates them and how they fit into the story. Are they the main character? Are they the side character? How are they going to see what unfolds? Hi, okay, now you have a character, you have a story, you have the imagery and you've decided the form it's gonna take. Um, well done, this is so much for six minutes. I'm, I'm really like delighted with you. So now what I want you to do is just to take your story for a walk. Um, write it and see where it takes you. When I'm, um, when I'm starting out with this, I generally pair it with a bit of research. So if you're writing, say, Little Red Riding Hood from the Wolf's Perspective, read a bit about wolves or watch some YouTube videos of wolves. Find out how they eat, how they interact with each other, um, what the rules of being a wolf are. Like, you don't have to put all of this into your story, but I find it helps to inspire and to ground me to learn new things um, that I didn't know before. And it connects me to the story because the story has taught me something as well. And that's like, that's quite impactful. Um, it's also a really great way of like, if you get frustrated or blocked or something, like reading or researching around a story can be a really nice way to kind of nourish you back until you can find a way in. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is when I finish speaking, read over anything you've jotted down while I've been talking and set a timer on your phone for 15 minutes and then begin to write. Words can't be fixed if they're not there. By the end of this, you might have a paragraph, a guide of where to go next, the voice of a compelling character in your head, a sentence that you love or just one powerful image. And if you don't, you can try this again tomorrow and the next day and the next day until you do. And I hope you find something wonderful. Thank you for listening.